Hello and welcome to Dollars and Cents, the Australia Institute podcast, where we explain just what the hell is going on in the economy. My name is Greg Jericho. I'm the Chief Economist at the Australia Institute. And joining me, as always, is our podcast producer, Jennifer Macy. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Greg. So there was a bit of panic stations this week when the inflation numbers came out because they weren't or seemingly weren't going down. Hot, sticky and painful. It's inflation. It's plateaued. It's so sticky, not just service, but goods as well. Inflation's up by 3.6% in the month of April versus 3.5% in the month of March. I actually thought it could be a little bit worse. It's still not great news, though. A concern for many mortgage holders around the nation. Yeah, look, I think a, a rate cut's out the window for this year. Can you tell us what's really happening, Greg, with inflation? And what did you make of the response? Yeah, the inflation figures that came out this week were the inflation figures for April. They're the perhaps the the non official official inflation rates. We uh, we have two versions of inflation. The one of the more traditional quarterly figures, but what we now also have is monthly figures that that give us a bit uh, of a of a quicker version of what's going on. And what we saw with these figures is that the annual inflation rate in April was 3.6%. So in other words, over the year to April, prices on average went up 3.6%. And that was a slight increase from March where they were going up 3.5%. And what we have also seen is that pretty much since December, inflation has been stuck at around that 35 3.6 sort of area, whereas before that, it had been coming down fairly steadily. And so some economists are getting all rather panicky about the fact, oh, inflation is sticky. The Reserve Bank needs to do more to to actually get inflation down. Okay, so everyone's throwing around this phrase sticky. What does it exactly mean? Yeah, basically it means that uh, inflation is stuck. It's not going up, not going down. And uh, it's for me, I find it quite uh, interesting because Economists, when they talk about inflation, we talk about it in kind of weird ways because the reality is prices always go up. Prices should always be going up. Prices rising is a sign of a healthy economy. The last thing we want is deflation where prices are falling every every month because when that happens, you're in kind of Great Depression territory. Uh, it's not a good thing for people to think, oh, no, I won't buy something this week because it's going to be cheaper next week because that means everyone stops shopping and it just you, know, you go into a depression. What economists care about is whether inflation is accelerating. In other words, what we saw during 21 and 22, where one month inflation would be 3.6%, the next would be 4, then 4.2. The growth of prices is accelerating. It keeps getting faster. And whenever that starts happening, that's when they start thinking, oh, this is not a good thing. We need to, to get inflation down. We need to get inflation stable. Rising inflation is, is a bad thing because, you know, it it's generally uh, leads to falling living standards and things we've seen. But what we see now is that inflation is neither rising nor falling. It's actually, it's not accelerating, and yet we still see economists getting sort of all antsy about it. But they also seem, um, as you say in the column, a bit fixated on this number, like they're stuck on that number, 3%. Yes, that's because the Reserve Bank has a, has a target, and it's an arbitrary target of trying to keep inflation between 2 and 3%. Why is it arbitrary? Well, because there's no natural law in economics that says that inflation should be any particular number. Um, other countries have different inflation targets. Back in the early 90s, we kind of, in a sense, decided 2 to 3% is a pretty good number. Uh, others make it, a, you know, 2%. Um, others just have a ceiling of 3%. You know, it's, it's basically uh, the central bank decided this is what it is. You can't go to a textbook or you can't, uh, there's no, as I say, there's no natural law of economics that says once inflation goes below 3%, things are hunky-dory. When it's above 3%, things are terrible. I mean, it's it's a target range to kind of keep it saying, okay, we don't want inflation accelerating, but we know it goes up and down a bit. So if we can keep it between that 2 and 3%, then it's kind of stable. Things are fine. People can make business decisions knowing this is generally what inflation is going to be and everything kind of works out in theory. But what we've found is that actually what that means is that 
some of these economists, especially those calling for higher interest rates, the reality is they're not worried about accelerating inflation. They're just worried about getting below this 3% uh, ceiling. And so my line is, well, hang on, inflation's sticky, which means it's not rising. It's kind of stuck at 3.5%. Okay, we might like in the long term for that to be lower, but is that really a terrible thing right now? Is is 3.5% so bad that if we got it down to, say, 2.9% or even just 3%, that things would be that much better? And the reality is probably not. You know, it's doing okay. There's no real panic stations, I think. And yet there is this continual call from people, oh, no, the Reserve Bank needs to get tougher, needs to, to raise interest rates just to get it below 3% rather than looking at inflation going, well, is it accelerating? No. Is it stuck? Yeah. Why is it stuck? Well, there are a lot of factors at play there. The other thing is that we're looking, because we talk about inflation a lot, but can you just explain what the difference is between the annual inflation numbers and the monthly ones and how we measure them? Because there seems to be a little bit of difference between those. Yeah, and this is the really tricky thing about inflation, why people get really confused about it, is that economists generally talk about inflation in annual terms. So the, the Reserve Bank's target of 2 to 3%, that's annual growth. And so when we hear this week that inflation is 3.6%, that means prices have gone up 3.6% on average over the last year. The problem with all this talk about accelerating and decelerating or inflation's coming down is people think, wait, inflation's coming down? That makes it sound like, oh, prices are coming down. It's like, no, just the growth of prices is coming down. And when, for example, it peaked, it was uh, inflation peaked around, you know, 7.2% around there. That meant prices were going up each year by 7.2%. Now they're going up each year by 3.6%. So it's slowed, but prices are still going up. And also, we still have the impact of those price rises from two years ago. They don't get wiped out. They went up 7.2% and then they've gone up another 3.6% on top of that. So people will look at inflation and hear, oh, inflation's come down and, you know, it's things are okay. And it's like, well, no, they're still dealing with the fact that they've had price rises over the past two years that have been really quite quick, really tough to deal with. And yes, prices aren't going up by so much now, but people are looking at their incomes and going, well, I still can't afford to buy the same amount of things I could three years ago. And so it's a real case of people can get really confused when you hear economists saying, oh, inflation's coming down. And, and it's like, well, what do you mean by that? And it's purely because we generally talk about it in an annual term rather than going, oh, how much has inflation gone up in the last two years, three years, four years, five years? We kind of just stick to that one annual rate. And that can get really confusing because people, it makes it sound like things are better, but the problem with it is it kind of erases past price rises. But real people actually know those price rises was, are still there. Our government understands the cost of living is the number one pressure on Australian families. There's more and more anecdotal signs by the day that really times are getting tougher out there. In a cost of living crisis with inflation running rampant, the end of financial year sales are critical for retailers and customers alike. The retail industry is the nation's biggest private employer with a lot of businesses and jobs on the line. Let's face it, the retail market is hurting. Yeah, so how has that changed our spending habits? Because the retail figures also came out this week and they always seem to be linked to inflation. Are we spending, is retail spending to blame for inflation not moving? This is really important because when you think about inflation, we need to remember what inflation is. Inflation is the consumer price index. It's, it, it is measuring the price rise of things bought by consumers. So what I really care about as an economist is, okay, are consumers out there spending like mad and as a result, shop owners going, wow, I've got 
lines around the block, I can raise prices because people are buying this stuff. You know, they're desperate for it and they're buying all my stuff. They obviously must be flush with cash and everything like that. But what we see in the retail spending figures is that we are not buying much at all. The amount of money we spent in the shops in April this year was just 1.3% more than the amount we spent in the shops in April last year. Think of it this way, though. The actual prices of things have gone up about 3.5%, but we only spent 1.3% more money. So that actually means we bought less stuff. Right. Because if we were bought just the exact same amount that we did last year, retail spending should have gone up basically 3.6% in line with inflation. You know, we're... Yeah. We're buying the same amount of things. They cost 3.5% more, so we had to spend 3.5% more. No, we're spending about 1.3% more, which what that means is we are actually spending less. We're buying less stuff, and that is a real sign that we are not flush with cash. We are not doing well. The economy or households, I should say, consumers are really struggling. And what we're also seeing is not just that they're, they're buying less, they're actually changing what they buy. They're, they're actually seeking out cheaper items. That they're, they're shifting towards cheaper versions of things because they might be buying perhaps the same amount of, uh, let's say, uh, cheese, but they're buying a different, cheaper version of cheese because price rises have gone up so much that, they're really having to find those bargains. The other thing that was being talked about in the news this week linked to these inflation numbers is that it seems to be around services, the cost of services as well. I mean, is is that if we're not spending stuff in the shops, does that mean the price of the services that we buy are also going up? Yeah, the retail figures are, are divided into various kinds of categories. We've got food, so basically just your, your grocery shopping. We've got dining out, and that's in cafes, takeaway or restaurants. We have department stores, household goods, and then we've got clothing and, and other things. And then we have this other wonderful thing called other retailing where basically they put everything that doesn't fit into the other things. And a lot of that is actually things like, you know, uh, hairdressing and our spending on hairdressing or these other retail has actually risen quite dramatically, about 4.7% in the past year. And that is essentially a bit of a sign that probably the cost of services is rising a bit faster than everything else. Generally, that's that's uh, something that economists worry about and certainly the Reserve Bank worries about. But also you have to think about the overall, we don't just spend all of our money on these services. We spend them on things like, you know, going to Bunnings, going to JB Hi-Fi, dining out, buying food and buying clothing. And so that's why we have a, a, a CPI that actually gets this average. And the average of things we're buying is kind of, as I was saying, the, the inc- price increases on average are, are kind of stuck. There's no sense of wages going mad so that... Uh, we're all, as I say, got lots of money in our bank accounts and feeling like we're going to go out and spend. So it's a case of I, I really get a bit annoyed at these uh, the lines that, oh, we, the Reserve Bank still has work to do because I'm like, well, what? You just want us to stop you know, going to the hairdressers more often or something? You know, it's, it really is a case. Look at the retail figures. Let me put it this way. The Average over the past 30 years, which includes a good period of the 90s, the the mining boom years, the GFC, the whole decade before the pandemic when things were pretty dismal and everything, over the 30 years, on average, the amount we spend in shops should rise around 4.85% each year. We spend 5% more than we did the year before. Yeah. Now we're at one3 we're nowhere near the average when it's not like we are spending madly. And what I did in my column was I, I thought, okay, we know back during the mining boom, we actually were pretty well off. There was a lot of money in the economy. Wages were growing strongly. John Howe was handing out tax cuts left and right. <laughs> there was also big increases in family tax benefit B and you know all that what was called middle class welfare and all this. There was a lot of money. People were shopping really quite strongly. And one way you can look at it is 
generally household consumption and retail, it kind of, you know, as I say, it, it rises, but it rises at a pretty steady rate. It doesn't bounce up and down too much. But when you look at what happened during the mining boom, there was a huge boom also in household spending. It really just went wildly in front of the long-term sort of trend levels. Whereas here now, it's the opposite. We are spending, you know, at the moment about 3% less than you would have expected us to given the the 10-year sort of trend levels. You know, during the pandemic, things bounced up and down, but it's not a case of we got back to normal now. No, we are spending less than you would expect. Yeah. There is not much spending out there. So this is why whenever anyone is saying, oh, oh no, inflation's at 3.6%, clearly something's, we're spending too much. We got we to gotta punish households. Let's raise interest rates more and that'll stop them spending. I'm like, they're already stopping spending. <laughs> we're buying less stuff than we did last year. We're changing what we're spending to cheaper stuff. We're really sort of letting everyone know we're doing it tough. So why would raising interest rates actually help anything? Well, let's have a look at that because there were mixed views that I heard this week about whether or not what the RBA should do in response. Some some commentators were pushing for an increase in interest rates, but I also heard some saying that they shouldn't. What do you think they're going to do? Oh, I think it's it would be extremely unlikely that they'll raise interest rates. I think they'll do nothing. I've been sort of saying that for a long time that they'll be doing nothing. If you look at the the futures market and what uh, people on the, who are buying and selling options on these things, they think there's probably about a ninety five to one hundred percent chance that they won't do anything. Right. There's a very very slight chance they might cut rates, but yeah, that's just some people having a bit of a bet. I think it's unlikely interest rates will actually change for the rest of the year. That's kind of my belief. Something really out of the ordinary has to occur. Unemployment would have to really start rising strongly or we get some really um, wacky inflation numbers that suggest something needs to be done or that things are going really badly. I think the, the Reserve Bank will probably do nothing and one of the reasons I think they'll do nothing is we talk about sticky inflation here. Well, it's sticky in, say, the US as well. They're at pretty much exactly the same rate where we are and they've been there for about six months as well. And this often happens, you know, We and I've said this in the past, we kind of don't want inflation to keep, you know, going down and because often that means that the economy is kind of tanking. Mm-hmm. And once it gets to 3%, the worry is it just keeps going, keeps going down and down and down. Right, and, and then you can't stop it. Yeah, and so maybe stopping at 3.5% for a bit is is kind of okay. You know, it's it's erring on the side of caution in a sense. We, it's, it's delivering what I think is kind of that soft landing that, that you hear economists talk about. The economy is not so precise and how the Reserve Bank operates is not so brilliant that they can absolutely ensure that, okay, inflation gets to 3% right now, we can ensure it will stop there and stay nice and stable. It really is a bit of a, you know, a a judgment call when you're you're trying to, to get things kind of right and it's not like fine tuning a car it's more like no. turning a, a massive tanker around in the middle of the ocean yeah it is it's it's not even so much hitting the brakes it's, it's like you've got a car going and then you stick it into neutral <laughs> and you hope it stops before you hit the wall oops and sometimes it's good that it stops maybe a bit uh, further away from the wall than you perhaps might have uh, aimed for, but that's better than it actually hitting the wall. So I think at the moment it's a case of, well, things, yeah, it's sticky, it's sticky all over. <laughs> you know, it's sticky everywhere. I think we can cope with this. And as we've seen, uh, we saw, I think it was uh, last week or the week before, wages, you know, growth is coming down. They're not accelerating. They're not going mad. We look at how we're spending we're clearly doing it tough. There's no signs that oh, households need to be punished here because we're we're spending too much money. We're 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 getting paid too much. Um, it's not that at all. 
you know, the big drivers of inflation, you know, we're talking rents, insurance costs, petrol was another good uh, increase. There were, you know, some seasonal things that happened in April that saw food and vegetables go up. We also had uh, holidays go up, but that was because April takes into account sort of uh, the Easter and and uh, Anzac Day weekend. So holiday prices also <laughs> always go up a bit in that. So it's a case of, you know, let's just calm down a bit. It's it's Things aren't that bad. So no need to panic yet. So I heard Sally McManus actually say if interest rates were to go up, then what happens is the landlords passes that costs on to their renters and then that actually has an inflationary effect. When they put up interest rates, obviously people's home loans go up. And what do people do when their home loans go up? They pass it on if they've got investment properties to renters. Mm. And so in a way, uh, the Reserve Bank is creating part of the inflation. Is she on the money there? Yeah, rents are a major part of inflation at the moment. They're really one of the biggest drivers of inflation. And you think about, well, why why is the price of rents gone up? Is it because... You know, people who are rent uh, have suddenly got so much more income to spend. No, it's because there's been a lot of rate rises and landlords have been able to use that as cover for raising prices. And it's it's a quite insidious little thing. And she's quite right. I think uh, a rate rise would actually have the opposite effect to, to what the Reserve Bank wants because we'll see you know, rent prices go up again, most likely. You know, I think the, the the worst thing, though, is that you look at how households are doing. Are they are they showing any signs in the figures that they are feeling pretty good with things? And the, one of the easiest ways to judge that is look at how much they're spending in the shops. And, you know, we're not spending in the shops. We are not. We're not. I would say it would be a really tough time to to be a small business owner in, in sort of a retail sector. Really tough because people are not spending money. They're looking for bargains. They're, they're chasing sales. And even then, they're not actually spending much overall. They're cutting back massively on non-essential items um, and why would anyone think that that's a situation where the Reserve Bank needs to raise interest rates more so that people spend less in the shops? It's like, how much less do you want them to spend? How how much more do you want unemployment to rise? Because that's essentially what they're after. Mm. They're saying, oh, there's too many people employed. There's too much money being spent in the economy. If we raise interest rates, that'll stop people spending in the shops so the shops will... Um, lay off workers or they won't hire anymore or they'll cap back on shifts and that means there'll be less money to be spent and everything will be wonderful. I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> yeah. we're already spending bugger all. Uh, how can you honestly say that that interest rate rises would be, is a good way to get us from 3.5% inflation to 3% inflation? Ask yourself, are things going to be that much better? If uh, it was 3%, no. You know, we're, we're talking really margins of things here. If, if the past year we'd had inflation below 3% and it's now up at 3.5%, you'd probably think, oh, maybe the Reserve Bank should raise interest rates just to get that down. But it's the opposite way. We're, it's coming down and it's coming down, unfortunately, in not a nice linear way. It doesn't. That's not how economies work, especially when you've got stuff like um, petrol prices from overseas. We got a lot of impacts of government excises on alcohol and tobacco and things like that, that that interact with prices. So I always get back to what are households doing? What what are we doing? Because we're the ones who up the consumers of the consumer price index. What are consumers doing? Well, we're not spending much at the moment, and that's a sign that we don't need another rate rise. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Greg. No problems, Jennifer. Really good to chat. Next week is a big one. The March quarter GDP figures will be out, so we will actually get a sense of uh, how the overall economy is going. Remember, consumers, households make up about 50% of the overall economy, so that's a general sign that, (laughs) as I've been saying this week, things aren't all that great. 
But uh, we'll get to see next week how everything's going, how businesses, how workers, how everything in the economy is operating and uh, should be a good one. Great. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Greg. And thank you, everyone, for listening. We will be back next week with Dollars and Cents. This episode of Dollars and Cents was recorded on Thursday, the 30th of May, and some things may have changed. You can find my column, Grogonomics, on the Guardian Australia site. And for more research, especially looking at how interest rates are not going to to help bring down inflation, go to our website, which is at australiainstitute.org.au. My Twitter handle and the handle I use for all social media is at Grog Scammett and Jennifer Macy is at Jennifer Macy. Our theme music is from Blue Dot Sessions. See you all next week. <laughs>